Hey everybody, I'm talking today about a book uh, I just read called Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. It's a book that was recommended to me by a client after we were having a conversation and many of the concepts that I discussed kind of reminded him of the concepts that Bill Perkins discussed in his book. So after that phone call with the client, I actually headed right down the street to Barnes & Noble and sure enough they had a copy there. So I picked one up. Um, it's a really light, easy read, was done with it within a couple days. It's, it's very accessible, but it's got some really interesting concepts. And I'd like to explore those here because many of the concepts are similar to concepts I've discussed in the past. Quick disclosure, just because I'm talking about this book doesn't mean I necessarily agree with everything within it. But I think it's really interesting and I think there are nuggets in this book that everyone could benefit from. So the author's point is that our goal is not to accumulate as much money for our deathbed as possible. That if we have a bunch of money left over when we pass, then we didn't do a great job maximizing the utility of that money throughout our life. You know, I talk about this a lot actually with my clients and I use the guardrail uh, terminology to frame the discussion. And in fact, I made a video on the spending guardrails and how I use those to help clients navigate, you know, spending too little or too much. The first objective for a financial advisor is obviously to make sure your clients don't run out of money, right? So that's priority number one. But with the clientele I work with, most of my clients are not at risk of running out of money. Most of my clients are actually at risk, for lack of a better term, of passing away with too much money in the bank account, far more than maybe we even planned on or desired. And what that implies then is that we made sacrifices throughout their lives unnecessarily because we were trying to leave a cushion for some unknown future, but we were too conservative with our spending or gifting or whatever it is that was important to us. And so my job as an advisor is first make sure we don't run out of money, but also the other side of that the other extreme is that to make sure we don't pass away with too much and that I can um, empower my clients to do more while they are healthy enough to do more. There are a couple challenges to this approach and you probably have a couple objections just hearing me tell you about this book that are popping in your head. And one of those is what if I wanna leave money to my kids and grandkids, family, charity, whatever it might be, okay? So you, uh, you have this estate goal that you want to fund. The answer to that, which is what Bill talks about, but it's also something that I've talked to clients about, is if you have a financial goal to leave money to a group of people or a charity or anyone, why are we not doing that during our lives? Why are we waiting until after we die to make those gifts? Don't we want to be alive? while we make those gifts and we are there to enjoy them and see the joy that it gives and how much it can help these folks or these organizations? Don't we wanna to give to kids when they are young enough, when they're, when they're in the years where they really need those funds, as opposed to when our kids themselves are in their 60s or 70s and they really don't have much need for that money and won't get much use out of it. Compared to someone who's maybe in their 20s, 30s and 40s, they're having children of their own, they're buying their first house, they are putting kids through school. There's a lot more financial strain because the income isn't quite as high yet and there's a lot of expenses, especially if children are involved. So why wouldn't we be making those gifts now as opposed to 20, 30, 40 years down the road if we can afford to do so? So that's another thing that I can help my clients with is understand how much do you need to be financially bulletproof? And then how much does that leave us to start gifting now as opposed to waiting till we're gone and we can't enjoy the giving process? If you use the die with zero concept, literally, when you die with zero, you've already taken care of your kids throughout your lifetime. And we don't have to worry about a pot of money being left over for them. So that's how the author addresses, you know, that objection of I want to leave money for my kids. Another uh, objection is that many folks, like especially many of my clients, have a nice nest egg built up because they were such disciplined savers during their accumulation. It's very difficult to go from the accumulation saving phase into a spend down phase. Once you've built that habit, 
it almost creates a lot of anxiety to start drawing down those assets that you've been saving up for 40 years. So that's another challenge to this approach. Also, I wanna caution anyone listening to this video not to misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying to be, I'm not saying to be lazy and shirk your responsibilities and don't do anything meaningful with your life. Because I think for me personally, I am much happier, I am more satisfied with my life when I am productive. So this is not some excuse to not reach your potential, to not work hard and all those different things. Because I think that gives life meaning and it helps our self-esteem and our ego. Um, I think it's just good for our overall mental health. So that's not at all what we're talking about with this concept. But it is saying that give yourself the freedom and the permission to enjoy the fruits of your labor along the way. I would like to read a few quotes from the book that I, th I think are pretty interesting. And in the beginning, he talks about, you know, you can't, the concept of we can't take it with us. The whole purpose is to enjoy it while we're alive. And so he says, death wakes people up. And the closer it gets, the more awake and aware we become. When the end is near, we suddenly start thinking, what the hell am I doing? Why did I wait this long? Until then, most of us go through life as if we had all the time in the world. He goes on, they put off what they want to do until it's too late, saving money for experiences they will never enjoy. There are three basics people need to have to get the most out of life. Health, free time, and money. The problem is that these things rarely, rarely all come together at once. Young people tend to have abundant health and a good deal of free time, but they don't usually have a lot of money. Retirees in their 60s, 70s, and beyond, the other end of the spectrum, have abundant time and often more money than young people. But unfortunately, they have less health and thus a diminished ability to enjoy the time and money they do have than the young do. Well, I hope you found this review helpful um, and picked up some nuggets that could be applied to your own lives or the lives of your loved ones. I know I picked up some interesting perspectives that I've begun applying to my own life already, and I think I'll carry with me forever. I thought it was important to make this video because I do find myself frequently encouraging clients to spend money now and pursue the things they've always dreamt of doing if I feel they can afford it. But it is difficult as I said earlier in the video, because many of my clients are such disciplined savers that flipping into drawdown mode is a very difficult transition. But we just don't know when the day comes that we will be physically unable to do the things that we want to do. And I've seen it far too frequently, especially the last couple of years, where folks had a lot of dreams and goals and aspirations, ideas of things they wanted to do. And because of the pandemic, they chose not to or they were just literally restricted from doing those things even though they could have afforded them and now something has happened that is preventing them from doing those things and may, they may never get the opportunity to do them again i just i think it would be such a shame to have a pile of money sitting in the bank at the end of our lives while having missed out on so many things that we desperately wanted to do but didn't do because we were worried about money unnecessarily and that's my job that's where i come in my job is to free you up and empower you to do the things you want to do to live a full life without guilt or anxiety. That's why we proactively update our financial projections. That's why I use the guardrail approach and have added all these tools so that we can make smart, informed decisions. We can visualize decisions. We can grasp the concepts and feel confident in our decisions going forward.